In this video, we're going to continue creating a little reaction time application in Swing by creating a panel where we can display some information. I'm going to make a reusable panel so that we can use four different forms of it, slightly different forms for different purposes. And then our final application is going to flip through those four different panels. So let's right click the package that we've got here that we created last time and create a new class. And I'm going to call it Reaction Panel. Click Finish. This is going to extend J Panel. So it extends J Panel. J Panel is, as you might imagine, a swing class for creating panels. So we'll add the import for that. And then let's add a constructor. So right click and go to source generate constructor using fields. I don't think we need this call to super here. Now I want a couple of labels on here. So I want something that I'm going to call title label and that's going to be a type J label. So the J labels are intended for displaying text on things. Let's say J label title label equals new J label. And we could like put some default text there, but I think what we'll do actually is deal with that in a minute. Let's make that private. And, and actually, I probably don't want to initialize it here, so I'm just gonna move that down a bit. Later on, we're gonna say title label in the constructor equals new J label for reasons that you'll see in a second. So let's just put a semicolon there and we'll have a private J label subtitle label as well. So we'll have a title and a subtitle. Now to the reaction panel, I want to pass some things when I create it. I want to be able to pass some things to the constructor. I'm going to have a color. Let's call this font and a color background and a string which will be the title and a string subtitle. Okay, so let's add the import for all that lot. And when I create the J label, I can pass the title to it already, the title string to display on the label. Let's duplicate this and do a similar thing for subtitle label, except this is going to display the subtitle. To change the font color on the label, I can just say on the labels that is, I can just say label, title label dot set foreground and pass the font color to that. Actually, I should probably call that font color rather than rather than just font because that's a bit confusing. So let's pass the font color to that and set the foreground on it with that. And I'll do the same for the subtitle label. That's going to be the same color as the title label. And now we should be able to add these to the panel and then display the panel and already see the labels. So to do that, we need some kind of a layout manager, which will enable us to specify we, where we are going to put these labels. So we could use, for example, border layout, which lets us add things at a kind of left, right, top, bottom or center position. Or we could use, well, there are several possibilities, but I, I think what we need to use here probably is, or it's, at least it's a good possibility, is grid bag layout. Grid bag layout is the most flexible kind of layout manager and it lets you lay out things in cells. So let's say set layout. So we're, we're, we're doing set layout on the reaction panel itself. And I'm gonna say new grid bag. Let's see if we can auto complete with control space. Yeah, grid bag layout. Now what I need is a thing called a grid bag constraints. And this is used to specify where everything goes within the grid layout. Let's call that GC, which is the usual name for it. And I'm going to set it equal to a new grid bag constraints. Now everything is going to be in one column. So I can set gc.gridx to zero, and that's going to be zero for both of our labels. 
This is the X coordinate, so like the horizontal coordinate of our labels. And that's going to be zero for both of them because I want them one underneath the other. They're both going to have the similar sort of X position. Then I can try adding the labels and maybe this will work. First, I need to say gc.grid y. And for the first label, the y coordinate will be zero. So that's going to be at the top of our two cells. And then we can say add, calling the uh, reaction panel method to add things to it to display. And we can add the title label. Then if we alter gc.grid y, so we leave x at zero, but we set y to one. So the coordinate system numbers these cells from top to bottom. And the number of cells uh, is, is just determined by what we set in terms of grid x and grid y. So here I'm just using grid x is always zero, grid, grid y is zero and then one. So we're gonna have uh, two cells, one underneath the other. Now let's say add subtitle label and one th thing that I have to remember which I've already forgotten is so when you call add and you add your component where is GC actually used? It's actually used here you have to pass it to add otherwise and um, it's really common to forget to do that but if you just call add then it doesn't matter what you set with your grid bag constraints, it's not going to have any effect. You've got to actually pass the grid bag constraints here. Okay, so I think that makes sense. So for both components, we set grid x equals zero. The title is in the uh, cell at position zero, and the subtitle label is at cell in y position one. So let's already try to display this. But first of all, let's take a look at this warning, just add a default serial version ID just to get rid of that warning. And then if I go to main frame, what I need to do now is create one of those panels and somehow make it display on the main frame. So let's go to the top here before we set it visible and do the other stuff and create a panel. Let's say var reaction panel equals new reaction panel and I want to set some things here so let's say the foreground color dot white maybe for the font the background here is going to be let's say color dot blue let's try that and for the title let's try setting for the moment just reaction times maybe and for the subtitle let's set uh i'll just i'll just write hello just for the moment just so that we can actually see something there and i'm going to think about this more carefully and um, probably in the next video so if i add that now to the main frame but again like the main frame needs some kind of uh layout manager so it knows where to put this panel and one of the simplest options that you can really use is is just border layout. I actually almost exclusively use border layout and which is really simple and a really complicated grid bag layout which is extremely flexible and a bit complicated. So let's see let's say here new border layout like that and just add the import for that. And then we can call add reaction panel. And this time I don't add any grid bag constraints. That's not appropriate here, but I can add border layout and one of a bunch of different uh, constants that represent where we want this uh, component to go. And what we can do is just put it in the center here and then hopefully it will fill the entire uh, frame. Okay, so and, and this, this is how we typically build up swing programs. If you've got a really complicated form or something, you don't have to build it all just using one layout manager, which you could do using grid bag uh, layout. You could build up a really complicated form 
using that one layout manager, but it's often easier to divide it up into separate panels and arrange components within each of those panels and then put those panels into some bigger panel or into a main frame or something. So you can build components out of components like this. Okay, so here, let's just try this and see if it works. Okay, so yeah, I, I can I can actually see the, the text there. It says reaction time's hello, but that looks white and the background of the panel looks white as well. Let's take a look at reaction panel here. Yeah, I didn't use the background color anywhere. So let's do that. Let's at the top say, in fact, this here there is a little complication. Let me show you. So if I do set background and I put a background here, let's just format everything with command shift F because I've got slightly out of line there. Okay, so I'm setting the background on the reaction panel. Uh, and if I run this, will it work? Yeah, it does work. Uh, I was I was thinking, will it work or not? Because with the labels, you actually have to set them to opaque in order to show the background. But by default, what we've got is transparent labels, which may well have expanded to cover this entire region, although it doesn't look. I think with grid bag constraints, they're actually only going to, they're going to kind of shrink wrap the text that's on them. And the background of the labels will by default be transparent. So if we set the background of the panel, then it we do actually see that color uh, even behind the labels here. So that works pretty well. So now let's just make the fonts on these labels. Let's just make it a bit of a different size. So I'm going to say here font, uh, let's call it title font equals new font. And I'm going to pick a font family that's definitely on my system. Let's use Arial. And we'll say here font dot, we could choose normal or italic. I use bold and make this maybe a 32 point font or something. We can always change this easier, easily later. And if I duplicate that, we can have a subtitle font. And I want this to be a bit smaller, maybe 24. Let's try that. And then we can use these on the labels. So title label dot set font and title font. And then we want subtitle label dot set font, subtitle font. Okay, let's try this. So it looks pretty good. The only thing that I don't like now is uh, that the title and subtitle are really close together. So I can think of at least two good ways to deal with that. Well, there's several different possibilities really. But if we go to reaction panel here, uh, we can do something with the grid bag layout. We could add an insets object when we add each of the labels, which allows us to specify the padding on the left, right, top and bottom. But another thing we can do is just set the Y padding so if I go to the top here and say GC dot, what's it actually called? iPad Y and set that to something like maybe 30. That's going to put some vertical padding around these labels. And now you can see that they're fairly well separated. Okay, so we'll leave it there for this video. Next time we probably want to create a bunch of these a bunch of different panels with different text on and different colors. And we're going to, I think, use a card layout that will enable us to uh, kind of flip through them as though we had a stack of cards here, kind of like a stack of panels, one on top of each other with only one visible at a time. But we'll leave that for next time. And this is just a reminder that if you go to caveofprogramming.com and there I've got a whole bunch of courses on different topics. Uh, they're also on udemy.com where many of them, hopefully most of them, get really good reviews. And if you scroll down and you can actually see down here a Mastering Java Swing course. I've called it different things on different platforms, but Java Swing Programming from Beginner to Expert. That's my Swing course and it teaches you Swing from the absolute basics 
and uh, it goes pretty slowly and it covers basically all or pretty much all major swing components. So do check that out. Okay, so until next time, happy coding.